Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, and in this video, I'll be showing you guys some gaming benchmarks that I conducted on my new Ryzen processor from AMD. I recently upgraded to the Ryzen 7 1800X CPU and I've been doing some testing and I thought I'd share it with you guys. I have already uploaded two videos relating to my Ryzen build. One of which is a cool time-lapse build video and the other shows some productivity and synthetic benchmarks. So I'll drop some links down below if you want to check them out. For this video, I also decided to include benchmark results for my 6600K system just to show you guys uh, a comparison or give you guys some insight on how an 1800X performs against a modern overclocked i5. Now I'm not intentionally trying to make this an unfair comparison in any way. The main reason why I included the i5 in the results is for the folks out there who were like me or are like me and are considering upgrading their processors to something with more cores like the 1800X or the 1700X or 1700. With these results, you'll be able to see what kind of a performance change you'll get. I know of course that AMD is using the 1800X to target the 6900K. So with all that said, let me just go over some quick specs of both the test systems. Starting off with the i5 6600K system, the cooler is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO with uh, 16 gigabytes of G-Scale Ripjaws V-Series memory clocked at 2800 MHz. And the motherboard is a Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 7. Moving on to the AMD R7 1800X build, we have the Noctua NHD15 for the CPU cooler, paired with 16GB of G-Scale Trident Z memory clocked at 3200MHz on a Gigabyte Aorus AX370 Gaming 5 motherboard. Both systems had their benchmarks conducted with an overclocked MSI GTX 1070 Armor OC. Now that the components and specs are all out of the way, let's look at these benchmarks. Okay, so this time around, I decided I'd do something different with the way I presented my benchmarks to you guys. Previously, I would go through each game separately and talk about the performance differences. Now, there wasn't really anything wrong with that method, except I felt like it was very time consuming and would make the video much longer than it actually needed to be. And since I'm only comparing two pieces of hardware here, it's better to do it this way instead. If I was comparing 4, 5, or more processors, then I think going through each game separately would be more appropriate as there are more factors and variables involved. But with two processors, there's less to talk about and most of the time a lot of the same stuff is said for each different game. So one game will offer better performance on a 6600K or one game will probably offer better performance on the 1800X. This way, all the results are right in front of you guys and you don't have to skip through a long video to see your game of interest. Also, I can talk about the results as a whole and making connections from game to game is uh, much easier. Looking at the results, we see some interesting numbers here. I tested all the games at 1080p, and that's because 1080p is the most popular resolution most people will game at with high, ultra, or max settings. Therefore, I wanted the results to represent a real-world scenario. One would think that with the 1800X being an 8-core, 16-threaded processor, it would actually demolish the i5 in every game. But as you guys can see here, that's actually not the case. You'll see that from these results, you can tell that having more cores or more threads necessarily isn't always a better thing. It all really comes down to how a game is optimized, how it takes advantage of threads in multiple cores, and if it's more reliant on single core performance. The results here show that while the 1800X is ahead for majority of the titles, the 6600K is not far behind and in some cases beats the 1800X. In games such as GTA 5, Shadow of Mordor, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Hitman 2016, we see that the 1800X beats the 6600K with uh, differences as large as 23%. Those games scale well with multiple threads. We also see that games such as Battlefield 1 and Gears of War 4 show us that both of these processors are performing very closely to each other. The 6600K shows us that it has a considerable lead over the 1800X in games such as Dirt Rally, Total War Warhammer, and Far Cry Primal. But let's take a look at the minimums. Here we see that in 5 titles, the minimums were better with the Ryzen 7 1800X, while the other 5 titles showed better minimums with the i5 6600K. So it's basically half and half. But overall, it looks like Ryzen has considerably better minimums than the 6600K. In games such as GTA 5 and Rainbow Six Siege, we see drops into the mid-30s with the 6600K, and when you have minimums that low, it certainly can get quite distracting since the frame rate variance is so high. But looking at the Ryzen 7 1800X on the other hand, 
We can see that the lowest recorded minimum frame rate was in Hitman 2016 with a minimum frame rate of 55 FPS. Looking at the overall frame rates from all the games, we see that the average frame rate from the 6600K is 119 and the average for the 1800X is 126, so a 6% difference there. Nothing huge and both will give you high frame rates for the most part. The minimums as I mentioned earlier show a bigger difference of about 11%, so there's less variance with the 1800X and that should allow you to experience smoother gameplay. So it all really comes down to the optimization of the game here. Games that are more reliant towards single threaded performance will exhibit better performance on something like a 6600K, as it has an IPC advantage of around 6 to 7%, and taking into account the clock speed differences, that difference is also subject to change. And as for the 1800X, games which love to take advantage of every thread available will be running better on the AMD processor since it has 4 times the thread count. A few things that I wanted to mention to you guys is that the results you're seeing here from the 1800X are very well subject to change. Ryzen is a new platform, the Zen architecture was built from the ground up, it's fresh and we only had the first iteration on the market currently. There are bound to be issues. Earlier there were problems with motherboards and RAM issues where people couldn't get high RAM speeds to work. That's actually still a problem with some motherboards and some motherboards have uh, actually resolved the issue. My board personally? I was actually able to use the XMP pr uh, profile for my RAM and it worked beautifully so far with the F5D BIOS. Windows 10 also seems to have its own scheduling issues going on. People are, are reporting that turning off the high precision event timer in the command prompt yields better performance or sometimes uh, disabling it will uh, enable better performance. Um, uh, people have noticed that turning SMT off, the simultaneous multi-threading or hyper-threading that's on the Ryzen processor sometimes yields better perf uh, performance. And we're also seeing results change as games are receiving patches for Ryzen. The folks over at PC Perspective recently tested a big Ryzen update for Ashes of the Singularity and found that the performance had increased up to 31% over their initial testing which is very impressive. There was also an update released for Dota 2 which showed an improvement as well, although not as big as the improvement was for Ashes of the Singularity, but still something to consider. So I mean, there's still room left for improvement, whether it's through EFI updates, RAM compatibility, and game optimization. So don't just take these numbers and benchmarks th that you guys see now as performance that's been set in stone, because things could definitely improve, myself included. In fact, depending on what kind of updates we see, I may end up making another video in the near future, revisiting some of these titles and redoing these benchmarks. Adore TV, who has a great channel and makes very inform informative content, recently made a video about the disparity of uh, Nvidia and AMD drivers on DirectX 12 and how that affected Ryzen's performance. If you guys have been following the tech press and Ryzen recently, you probably noticed that most reviewers used uh, high-end GPUs from Nvidia. So it's, it's a great video and I definitely recommend you guys check it out. I'll have links down below in, in the video description for all of this stuff. Going back to the topic on hand, we here we see that the 1800X and the 6600K both offer great gaming performance. I also just want to say this one more time and just so no one misunderstands me here. I'm not recommending one processor over the other in this video as both of them have their own use cases. If you're a gamer and a content creator, any of the Ryzen 7 processors will be a better choice as the 16 threads will be more useful, whereas the 6600K will be a better value for those who are just strictly gaming. So they have their own scenarios and criteria that they fit better into, especially when you take into account their prices. The 1800X is a $500 processor and the 6600K is a $240 processor. But what happens when you bring in something like a Ryzen 5 1600 or a 1600X which costs about the same as an i5. I'll have a video out soon where I'll be exploring some results I obtained by simulating performance of a Ryzen 5 processor. Well guys, that wraps up this video regarding the gaming benchmarks I did with the 1800X at 1080p. I hope you guys found this video informative and interesting, and if you did then leave a like. Let me know any comments, questions, or thoughts down below in the comments section, and if you're interested in more content like this then hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys, take care and have a good one.